the past is gone. Of the scriptures written, it's, it's, it's as if there's time is linear, and the written part is, is the past tense or the sense of being over. And that's the whole trick. Um, so you could say that um, the only frustration, and, the, and that's exactly what the ego is, is the ego is saying, no, it's not over, and it can be changed. The world can be changed, people can be changed, personalities can change, you know, it's, it's a very strong emphasis at changing the form. And this is more of an easing back into like the observer self or the witness self. Like some, you might have heard of like Akashic Records, because there's a lot of uh, teachings that involve the Akashic Records. And it's implied that you can read, literally kind of read the Akashic Records. And oftentimes it's, they say, you can only go, they'll only let you go so far uh, into the future of reading. Um, but when we look at Nostradamus and we look at different prophets and and seers, and so on and so forth, that seem to forecast things years, or decades, or even centuries before they actually occurred, with pretty strong accuracy, that again implies that, that they weren't reading something that hadn't really happened yet. It seems that way in linear time, but they were just reading almost like a blueprint of, of the Book of Life, or of what was already there. So, that's the, that is the biggest contradiction to the way that the sleeping mind perceives the world, relationships, and time. Um, you know, you were there in uh, Loomis where we showed uh, Time Traveler's wife, and, um, and we showed a Star Trek episode, and we have so many of those kind of time metaphysical episodes. It seems like each time we watch one, it just loosens something a little more and gives us a little bit different perspective on time. Um, and for me, with well, I know you do a lot of traveling, and when I'm traveling across time zones and date lines and things, you know, it starts to feel more and more like a construct uh, than than a set reality. When the mind is asleep, it has this perception of the passage of time. It's and it seems to go in one direction, and it seems to be a certain way. And then when you start getting into the, the joy of, of being absorbed in something, you can actually seem to lose track of the passage of time. Or one time I, I told this story a lot that um, when I was flying in, uh, I think I was flying up to like Brisbane or, or Gold Coast, uh, Australia, and I was sitting next to a very happy man. We didn't say a word to each other the whole flight. And just when the plane is descending to come down and touch down on the runway, he just looks over me with a big smile on his face and an Aussie accent. And he's, you know, he said, isn't time a funny thing? And he launches into talking about time and how funny it is. And I said, yeah, it really is funny. And he was telling me this whole story about his cell phone plane. I guess he was living between two different states in, uh, I don't know, it was New South Wales and, and the next one. And basically, he had a cell phone plan, and the plan had different coverages and different options depending on, on what zone you were in. And the back of his house, was in one zone, and the front of his house was in another zone, and he was right on the line. And one of the zones was, you know, uh, you know, you had free calls, and the other one was not free calls at all. So, I think between having some calls in his back porch and his front couch or something, there was some astronomical uh, cell phone bill. And he proceeded to tell me the whole story, just as we were touching down and rolling on the runway. And, and I was just laughing, and he was laughing, and it was, he was like, this is absurd. This is absolutely absurd. And I could really, that's been my whole experience of it. The absurdity 
of time, of, of living based on time, of living based on these outcomes, um, you're late, guilty, guilty. You're early, guilty, guilty. I mean, you know, it's like, catch you every, every way you play it, there's guilt. And, and then there's this beautiful presence in us that's, it's like that, that Chicago song. Time, does anybody really know what time it is? Care, does anybody really care about time? You know, it's like, oh yeah, that's why we like the vibe of that song. Because it's like, yeah, yeah, that's, it's a nag. That time is, is a drag. <laughs> you know, it's just this pressure associated with it. And the script is written is, is just really an emphasis that that time is the past. And really the, the point of coming to that understanding is that first of all that it's gone, and second of all is that, that you can't really change it. You can't really change anything of time. And once you begin to grasp that in more of a full awareness, then you cease to try. You cease to play the game of trying to fix it. I mean, there's a lot of metaphors in the Course, and before the Course came, Jesus uh, told Helen Schuckman that people were being called from all over to play their part in a <coughs> celestial speed-up, he called it. And I've had that question where I go around and, and go, why would Jesus say that to her? Why would he even use that term, celestial speed-up, as a way of like saving time or speeding up at something, when it's an illusion? How can you speed up an illusion? And that's the, supposed to be the, the thing that, that he used to kind of uh, tell her of the urgency of accepting her part, you know, to play her part and take down this course. But again, it's, it's all metaphors of the spirit facing the mind and, and giving the mind what it can handle based on what it believes. She was a research psychologist, you know. She, she didn't really believe in past lives, you know. Not from a sense that knowing that it, all time is simultaneous, but, but even within that construct, you know, she just didn't have room in her mind to even open to that stepping stone. She was a research psychologist at Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center in New York City, and and he reached her with you know the celestial speed up thing. So it's it's not something that you you really can grasp until you're really ready for it. Uh, I like to show a lot of uh, time movies. I love showing like quantum physics movies, whether it's actually quantum physics teachings or even better quantum physics dramas that, that show you, the kind of demonstrate or take you in to the experience through the movie. And, and you know, I could get into talking about um, quantum physics, you know, waves and particles and, and um, the idea of just even a superposition that, that Basically, there's all these potential outcomes, and that we're we're really dealing with potentiality, and then what we call as specific outcomes and situations, like oh, here's a room, a spacious room with some candles burning, and some guy in a blue shirt up there rattling away, and a bunch of lights, and I'm sitting around with you know, thirty some people, whatever, you know, that's an outcome. That's like a, an outcome pulled out of all the potential outcomes that there could seem to be, this is one, and this is just determined by belief. You know, projection makes perception. You, if you spot it, you got it. If you believe it, you perceive it. You have to have a, a limiting set of beliefs to say, I'm in a room, even. Uh, that's, a, that's just a statement that's based on a lot of beliefs. Well, yeah, you're in a room. If you believe you're a body, <laughs> you're in a room. Uh, how many teachers of God does it take to save the world? 
Jesus says there's one, one teacher of God is what's needed to, to save the world. But he qualifies it, he says that that teacher of God is not a body or in a body. Interesting qualification there. Not a body or in a body. Not a soul in a body. You know, it, it's like he's saying, we're going to have to <coughs> delocate here. <laughs> you can't be the Holy Christ and be limited by time-space coordinates. You can't be inside a cosmos of illusion <coughs> occupying some coordinates and be everything that there is. It's going to have to be one or the other. Are you the quantum field? Or are you a specific outcome of belief, which is very specific? So, you see how that starts to take the whole script is written and the whole time thing and, and put it into looking more at mind and consciousness and it kind of, just by even having that discussion, it starts to, mm, you can feel your mind start to expand. Mm, maybe I'm not so limited. After all, maybe I just, I bought that ticket. You know, that was the song, George Michael. I bought a ticket to the world, but now I've come back again, back to the quantum field. Why do I find it hard to write the next line? Oh, I want the truth to be said. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I know this. It's a quantum song. Much is true. Interesting. Why do I find it hard to write the next line? Oh, maybe there isn't one. Maybe there isn't one. Maybe I'm vastness and wholeness. So, so that's what's fun about going through this awakening experience. It's, it's highly practical. The spirit deals with what you believe and what you perceive, and it is, it is eminently just vast where you, where you finally find yourself. You find yourself delocated, and you find yourself disidentified from the world, and you don't find yourself disoriented anymore. You're, you're just everything that there is. That's, that's not a sense of confusion or disorientation, that's a sense of glory. You know, somebody says, how are you doing? I'm all that there is. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I asked. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that sounds pretty big. <laughs> but, you know, that's the feeling. There's a majesty to it. There's a sense of freedom to it. There's a sense of glory. It's not that sense of lack and limitation. And, you know, a lot of us have touched on that in meditation from time to time, or we've had some experiences that have kind of seen, you know, they kind of catch us off guard. Like, whoa, what was that? Wow, what was that? But it's just the ego looking upon it, going, what was that, you know? It wasn't the spirit, you know, the spirit is, is that vastness. So, yeah, I just, I keep showing quantum, quantum movies, quantum leap episodes. <laughs>